Hey guys, in case you are watching Drone Week live from the US and if you are 18 years or older, we are gonna give away a brand new Phantom 4 drone. All you have to do is submit your questions through Facebook. You will be randomly selected. Uh, we will also answer your questions live. If you wanna know more about this, check this website over here for all the official rules. Welcome to day five of Drone Week. It's me again, Erika Firmo. I work at GE and I will be your host throughout this last episode. Today we are in a very special place and to close out the week, we are live at the, in the middle of the Olympic Park. We're gonna fly our drone inside the Arena Karaoke 3. This is where the fencing and taekwondo competitions will be held during the Olympic Games. And we will show you guys how GE is lighting up this arena and how this light will impact the competition. We will also tell you guys how G is lighting up Brazil and Rio for the Olympic Games. So in case you have questions, don't forget to submit them on Facebook. If you are watching us from the US, you, we, will gonna, we are giving away a brand new Phantom 4 drone. All you have to do to participate is send your questions on Facebook and we will answer a couple of them live at the end of the show. And before we kick off today's episode, Let's take a look on the story behind the show. Lighting is such a critical part of keeping big cities up and running at all hours. As a worldwide partner of the Rio 2016 Olympic Games, GE is working with cities around Brazil to bring efficient, connected lighting to their seaside parks, highways, and bridges, all of which will soon be hosting crowds of visitors from all over the world. Running along the coast where downtown Rio meets the bay, Flamingo Park is the largest public leisure area in the city. Its designer, architect Loda de Macedo Suarez, imagined a modern park where artificial light would make a moonlit stroll possible every day of the week. To accomplish this, she installed towering lighting structures throughout the Greenway. Over time, the landscaping thrived and grew and the lights disappeared behind trees, leaving behind a path not safe to walk at night. GE is working with the city of Rio to return Flamingo Park to its architect's original vision. Through the gift of GE light grid technology, the city of Rio can wirelessly deliver on the dream of moonlit walks along the bay. replacing the original metal halide lamps high above the trees with efficient LEDs and adding path-level fixtures below the canopy, the park has been given a new life for the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. Light grid monitors the health of fixtures, controls them remotely, and uses GPS data to localize damaged units for maintenance. G is helping to make this landmark a brighter, safer place, all while increasing energy efficiency. Florianopolis, about 1,100 kilometers south of Rio, is the first city in Brazil to use light grid, an evolutionary step in a plan to become an intelligent city through the use of smart, aware technology. At the Pedro Ivo Campo Bridge, which connects the island city to the Brazilian mainland, officials can remotely measure energy consumption, manage light levels, and anticipate and address possible failures while reducing consumption costs by as much as 50%. And 
And now, a live look at how GE is helping to light the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. Also, Taekwondo competitions will be held during the Olympic Games. Right now, you guys will be able to watch a fencing training while our GE experts, they will explain how the lighting inside the arena impacts the athletes. Uh, don't forget to send your question on what you are about to see through Facebook. We will answer them live at the end of the show. And here with me today, I have Alfredo Melo. He was with us yesterday and he is the Olympic um, actually, he works for Jeep, and he is the commercial leader for the Olympics. And also, Lena Kara. Lena is our lighting designer. Thank you, guys. Thank you. That's me again, guys. <laughs> so uh, today um, we are going to be seeing how GE is lighting up Rio de Janeiro for the Olympics. Okay. So we already have about 80 projects executed or under execution, distributed across Rio de Janeiro. Okay, we have projects related specifically to the Olympics, such as this arena here, in which we are supplying the sports lighting and also LED solutions for the arena. Uh, inside the Olympic Park Arena Carioca 1, 2 and 3, the velodrome, the massive tennis center, and also three uh, Olympic stadiums. One is the iconic Maracanã Stadiums, where the opening and closing ceremonies will happen and two other stadiums outside of Rio de Janeiro. The Brasilia National Stadium and one big stadium in Manaus as well. So let me hand over to my colleague here, uh, Lana, that you're going to explain in details why uh, a comprehensive design is very, very important for a perfect broadcasting. Thank you, Alfredo. Thank you, Erica. I'm glad to be here and join you for the last day of Drone Week. I'm the lead lighting designer for Current Powered by GE. And we'll see a little bit of the latest lighting technologies that we are delivering for the games. Um, actually, me and the entire design team have been working for the past three years to deliver lighting studies for each and every Olympic-related installation here in Rio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. It's a lot. Uh, while our drones fly uh, inside the arena, can you tell us how the lighting is impacting the competition right now? Sure. Uh, to begin with, uh, each Olympic design had to meet very high standards for broadcast transmission. And the first one is the lighting level. So for us to have like a competition scene for broadcast transmission, we need to provide at least three or four times more light than an average project on an ordinary arena that doesn't have special broadcast transmission. And to do that, here in Car Arena Carioca 3, we worked with 200 fixtures, each uh, with three different types, and each one of them has to be aimed directly at a very specific point on the competition area. So we can guarantee that lighting is uniform, either for uh, slow motion transmission or ultra high definition cameras, yeah? Yes, well, what is very, very important too is to emphasize the uniformity and shadowing. Yes, when we, when we talk about the average of light we have, we need to provide, or we don't need to provide shadows. So athletes, audience in the arena and spectators watching TV cannot see any shadows on the floor. And uh, besides that, to, pre to prevent shadowing from happening, we have to work with the correct aiming of each fixture. And not only that, but also equip each one of these fixtures with a sports, a special lamp for sports lighting. This is a thousand watt lamp that we have here. And, bes and together with the lamp, each fixture has a flicker-free device. 
The flicker-free device is here to prevent image from trembling during transmission. And this is very important too, to meet all the high standards that broadcast lighting, uh, broadcast transmission needs for games time. Yeah, yeah the, our, our design team you know, learned a lot during all this process too, but were able in the end to achieve these very high standards provided from the uh, International Olympic Committee, and we are achieving them all. Sure, and the last of the aspect that I have to mention is that the lamps also need to provide a correct color of the light and a high color rendering. So whoever is watching from here or from home can distinguish very clearly the colors of the uniform, for example, the reds, the greens, the yellows, or even follow the quick movement of a tennis ball during a match. That's why a careful design and the correct product application was necessary for Rio 2016. As you said, Lana, everything is meticulously calculated. Yeah, very <laughs> meticulously calculated. Thank yes. you, guys. Uh, Lana and Alfredo, they will be back in about some minutes and they will answer questions. So if you have questions, send them, send them through Facebook and we will answer them live. Uh, but right now we have something special to you guys because the same way we have for the Olympics game, we're going to have a closing ceremony right outside these arenas with our drones. I hope you can enjoy the show. Most drones that people see and are familiar with are designed for aerial photography. We're actually not using a lot of those features and instead um, we're taking advantage of the fact that the drones have sensors on board to keep them in the air. The inspiration for the drone storm, really we wanted to create a spectacle in, in the third dimension because normally when you see a show it's on the ground and there, there's going to be colors and lights but it doesn't usually go up in the air. These drones that you see in front of you and the drones that we've talked about, they're actually going to take off and they're going to fly themselves and they're going to create these patterns in the sky, um, sort of an aerial light show. And it's all going to be set to music. We're basically going to do a, a live drone demonstration where no pilots are actually in charge of the aircraft. So it's all computer controlled. So we're programming the drone's movements with a combination of software that we've written um, and other, some, some tools out there that's normally used for things like choreography and other, other types of shows, normally not in the air. The drone storm requires a lot of different moving bits. Um, we have obviously a lot of engineering, so there's software that has to go into designing a drone swarm and a drone ballet. The swarming is based on GPS, and so GPS positions are how we design and choreograph the whole routine. Um, there's a pretty complicated way of, of, of actually going out to the field and taking measurements. To get those measurements, we had to go to Brazil. We were able to record GPS positions. Um, we also have to measure for interference. So the lighting that you guys are going to see on the drones is definitely uh, in sync with the music. Um, and it's actually pre-programmed using some very cool tools. What we were able to do is to take uh, a keyboard, which is normally used to sort of record music, and we're able to set up keys using software that we wrote to actually trigger different things to happen in the air with the lights. Um, and you're basically going to watch a whole performance come to life. And it's going to be in, it's going to be in conjunction with flight and music uh, and lights changing color in the sky. I'll be live after the swarm to answer any of your questions about our technology that we use or about the experience of being in Brazil. It's all coming up now, live from Rio.
questions that are coming from social media. In case, in case you have questions, send them to Facebook. Lana is here, Alfredo is here, and Rali Angelo, our drone technologist, will come in a second to answer them all. And first, first question to you, Lana. Emma from US is asking, she wants to know what is current powered by GE? Well, current was launched officially at the end of last year. It's a first of its kind energy startup born within GE's own walls and that unites the four pillars of energy efficiency, which are LED, solar generation, energy storage and electric vehicles. I'm, I'm very proud to be part of it. Thank you, Lena. So, Riley just joined us in case you guys have questions uh, for him. He's here available to answer any questions on drones. But the next one is for you, Alfredo. Sam from US, he's asking what types of projects has current done for the Olympic Games in Rio? Yeah, we have uh, many types of projects, okay? I mentioned there we have 80 different projects. So we are doing several sports lighting arenas and also public spaces too. So we have beautiful squares, the Rodrigo de Fleitas Lagoon with our LED technologies. And we'll talk a little bit later about the, the, the legacy projects in the Flamengo Park and Lapa area. Question to you coming from Brazil. Gustavo is asking if about the lighting uh, inside the arenas. Are they all the same or they are different from each other? They are different from each other. Depending on each sport modality and depending on the height available for us to fix the luminaires, we have to adjust product and lamp type for uh, to, ha to get the best outcome of the lighting solution as a whole. Thank you, Lena. Now a question to you, Radley. Uh, comes uh, comes from USA. 
Uh, someone was asking uh, how different this uh, opening ceremony was uh, when compared to the first one. Yeah, absolutely. So the technology is the same. So it's the same drones that you're seeing. Um, but of course, moving locations means we have to change all the choreography. So it is a GPS space swarm. So we had to move all of that choreography and rewrite it for this particular location. So it is a little bit different. Thank you. Mike from US is asking you, Alfredo. He wants to know how many LED lightings are used inside the arenas. Inside this one, Arena Carioca 3, yeah. we have approximately 200. But uh, there are, you know, in the tennis, we have a different quantity in Maracanã. So it varies, as Lana was explaining. In total, what is important to emphasize, we have 200,000 lighting points in Rio de Janeiro. We are supplying all of that because of the Olympics. For example, in the Olympic, uh, uh, Olympic Village, we have a lot of uh, luminaires or when the athletes will come to their rooms they will see GE technology so they will be in contact with GE technology all the time either in their rooms or playing inside the arenas. Hey, thank you Alfredo. Another question to you Lana. Laura from USA is, uh, is asking about the lighting, oh the um, intelligent cities. She wants to know if we do have intel uh, if US do have intelligent cities and if GE has projects there or here in Brazil. Yeah, well, in the U.S. we do have the first intelligent cities installed are in San Francisco and San Diego. Of course, we have some other pilots going on. In Latin America, the first one to adopt intelligent lighting was Sansonat in El Salvador. Also in Argentina, we have something going on in Buenos Aires. And here in Rio, we are beginning to build the necessary infrastructure with our legacy donation at Flamengo uh, and Lapa neighborhood. A question to you, Radley, yeah. uh, from the U.S. Uh, Brian is asking, uh, what is the range of, uh, of the, the drones when they're capturing the video? Sure, so for the video drones that we, uh, we're using to shoot today, you can actually fly out about two miles comfortably, um, but obviously you want to be safe when you fly, so you don't usually go out that far, but the radios are very powerful. Okay, thank you. Um, Alfredo, a question from Bruno from Brazil. He wants to know if all the AG projects that he's working on, they will be finalized for the real games. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> there, uh, every, everything is going to be ready by August fifth uh, at twenty sixteen Brazil time. Okay, so we are pretty uh, on schedule in the, the projects that we are involved. So currently, we are installing the a project called Site Lighting, is the illumination for all service areas in, in inside the arenas, and finalizing also the, the the legacy projects in Flamengo Park and in Lapa area too. Another question to you, Alfredo. Uh, it's from Brazil. Uh, someone wants to know what are the other projects that GE has for the games? Yeah, so uh, here uh, I'd like to emphasize again the legacy projects. Okay, so uh, as a tradition, GE donates, makes a, a significant donate, a donation to the host city. So here in Rio, we chose two landmarks, very beautiful places, to donate a new uh, lighting for Flamengo Park and for Lapa area with this technology that Lana was describing here is the, the initial infrastructure to be uh, a smart city and also the uh, hospital Souza Guiar that we are donating imaging equipment and, all, and also equipment for surgeries. Okay. okay, thank you. Guys, that was the last question for today. Thank you, Rally, Alfredo, thank Lana. You. Thank you very much. And thank all of you who watched us throughout the last five days. It was a pleasure to show you guys how GE is powering the Olympic Games and share a little bit more about my work at GE as a G communicator. We talked about how we are taking care of the athletes. We talked about how we are lighting up the arenas. So it was a pleasure to share this with you guys. In case you want to watch Drone Week one more time, all the episodes will be available on demand in our Facebook. Also, don't forget to follow us on Snapchat, General Electric. Um, and as I would say in Portuguese, tchau, tchau. See you next Drone Week. Tchau, tchau. Bye-bye.